Today we're talking about Baba Yaga because this is a Baba Yaga guide. I will say beforehand that I do think she is not exactly in a balanced state yet and I'm expecting some changes to basically a lot of parts of her kit. But for now we will work with what we got so you get a good idea of how to play her if you want to test her out in your games right now. Let's begin with the abilities and then we'll look into the leveling order as well as builds and other tips. First let's have a look at her passive. Her passive is a creep in cabin that follows her around and what you can see in the passive meter is that there is a bar and if I walk up to the cabin it'll actually heal me and this uses up the bar, this is a percentage heal and this is one of the effects or one of the ways that you can utilize it. The healing effect heals for 0.8% of your health per tick. And another effect that you can see now is this one. You can actually use this energy to stack items like Major's Blessing. It will gradually stack over time. What you can also see here is this connection to Odin. If the cabin is close to an enemy, then it'll gain additional energy and it'll stack quicker, helping you getting your item stacks quicker. However, you will also see that the cabin can be a little bit hesitant, a little bit erratic, and that doesn't like being close to enemies. So, as you can see here, it came to me, but then as Odin started running at it, it actually ran away. So all in all, this can be used as a sustain mechanic or as a stacking mechanic, depending on how you want to play. And both playstyles are totally viable from what I can say so far. Now for her one, Wild Witchcraft. This ability can actually have different shapes, and we're going to start with the one that stands out the most, unfortunately, in a negative way. And that is the Oval. The oval looks like this. The target is a little bit off here. So for example, you can see that right now there's no highlight on the Odin, but it actually hits the enemy. So it is, I think, around 65 units looking at this. And this will travel around from the right to the left. But what you also notice is that it travels relatively slowly and it fires slowly as well. So it has a bit more wind up than the other forms of firing it. And you will see that right now. There's a bit of an animation that goes on before this effect even happens, which is very unfortunate. And you can see right now that the effects are all randomized and the shapes as well. We get to the effects in a bit. And that's why I have exactly the same effect right now as well. The next shape is the Y shape. This is probably the strongest shape because it has the longest range. You can see that even if I was back here way behind my normal range, I could still hit these two targets here. And you can see this even better if we're going to the range measurement, so to speak. I can basically be at the edge of this and still hit an enemy over there. So this would approximately be a range of 90 units altogether to the very end of the shape. And we can just throw this out and it would hit everyone in the way. Then we have the right corner shape or the L shape, however you want to look at it, which goes straight first and then turns to the right. And last but not least, we have the left corner shape. That's the same thing, but to the left. What you already probably noticed is, if you're looking at the different effects here, that along with this different shape, there are also different effects. You have the purple one, it's a silence. You have a movement speed increase for your team. You have a slow for the enemy team that you can see right here. And you have a protection increase for your team. So as long as anyone is walking on this, they will get this effect applied and it lasts for one second, no matter what effect. So you could even get stuck on this and you have a silence on you for quite a while if you're locked down in another way. This ability is, in my opinion, her main clear and damaging tool. The second ability is Baba's Brew. And what you can already see here is that I have one in my inventory. So if I use the ability, it pulls out this potion. It can have three different parts and different uh, combinations. So the eye is extra damage, the scales are a slow to the enemy, and the fangs are a attack speed slow as well as a power reduction to the enemy. And depending on which potion I have, I can swap this with my potion in the inventory, I can have a different combination of effects. And this is randomized every single time, so you can get a little bit more damage or more slow. So this one, for example, has more slow, or you can just have uh, the power reduction on the enemy. Interesting effect. But there is something that you have to be aware of with this ability. So the first use pulls up the potion, or the first button press pulls up the potion. And then you have this targeter. And if you left click, if you're using normal cast, this is what you're used to, then the ability fires. The second potion, however, that you can have in your inventory that is stored, you pull up with the consumable button. 
You can store it again by just right clicking at this point, or you can also store it again by using the ability again. So what that means is if you're pressing the ability button twice, you will not fire the ability, but you will store the potion. I think this is a very annoying way to handle this, but that's how it currently works and maybe this will be upgraded in the future. So there was the suggestion to, once your ability is on cooldown, be able to use the potion from your inventory by pressing the button again, which I think would be very good. But now it works like this, be aware of it. Her third ability is Blast Off. Blast Off is interesting because it's a unique escape mechanic. Initially you will speed up, go forward, and then you have a leap that follows afterwards. And if your enemy is in the explosion area in the moment that the leap happens, then they take damage. So the place where I leap to doesn't deal damage, but the place where I leap from will deal damage. And you can do a 180 flip if you want to. So this can be used to engage and deal some damage and then quickly get out again if you dare. What you have to note with this is the initial part of the ability will speed you up, but it's not quite as drastic as you may think. So what you'll see if I walk with this Odin bot here is we basically have the same speed. Now, if the ability would just speed me up, I would obviously be much faster than him. But the ability slows down. So I speed up a little bit, but then I slow down. It'll still allow you to cover a little bit more ground than Odin does here, or than purely walking does. But looking at the, the movement speed here, it kind of goes down gradually and it goes below base movement speed. And because of how diminishing return works, it's actually, well, almost the same as walking, and the leap part is where you really close more distance, but it's something to be aware of. And then we have the ultimate, home sweet home. This one summons on the cabin, you use it, and it knocks back enemies and gives you a little shield. Now you're in this cabin form and you can fire projectiles. And these are fireballs that will deal damage to enemies, they will crawl towards enemies, and they will have damage over time once they land on the ground. What is worth noting here is that you can obviously use this for self-defense, but you should be aware that in some situations it's better to not throw directly at an enemy because the projectile is very slow and you may be better off trying to throw it somewhere close to them where it can kind of corner them in and you can hit them with the ticking dot afterwards so you guarantee that part of the damage. Now that we've looked at the abilities, let's talk about the leveling order. On level 1, I would definitely level the 1, Wild Witchcraft, because it's your main clear and damaging tool reasonable cooldown and safer than everything else. In level 2, you have the choice. If you have enough pressure and you feel like you just want some more damage, I would go for the 2, and I think that feels good in most situations. Though sometimes you might want to want have the 3 first, because the 3 gives you more safety and still adds a decent amount of clear. It's just a little bit harder to get it on the full wave. On level 4, I would put another point in Wild Witchcraft. I think that is the one you want to prioritize. And then definitely a point into the ultimate. After that, the priority again shifts to Wild Witchcraft, and I would actually recommend skipping a point on level 8, and then putting one point into Wild Witchcraft and Home Sweet Home on level 9. A single point in Home Sweet Home can give you more than 200 extra base damage, and that's not something you're going to reach in most situations, but when you can reach it, it's obviously very good, and Wild Witchcraft is just too potent not to max it whenever you can. Afterwards, the priority shifts to Baba's Brew, because that gets extra effects, reduced cooldown and everything, and then whenever you can, you max out the ultimate, and then we put our points into Blast Off until we have level 20. Baba Yaga's combat style and ability usage order is super dependent on the situation, as basically all of her abilities can somewhat be utilized on their own, there is no specific order that you need to follow. I like using the two into the one, especially when I have a slowing potion that I have at hand already, because that way you can secure the one a little bit easier if you have one of the more awkward shapes, especially with the oval one. But that's already situational. I also try and have a shape that's not the oval when I engage on enemies, as I find the oval to be too unreliable. If you're getting engaged on, you can often get away just by using your 3, but it can be a risk because you're kind of stuck in it for one second as well. So when you're getting dove by multiple enemies, then just drop your ultimate so you get the extra shield and you deal a lot of damage to them and you're not much of a threat to them that way. And you also knock them back. That can, however, also result in enemies turning on you depending on how tanky you are at that point. 
A lot of how you want to use her abilities depends on the build as well. So if you, for example, have more defensive items that allows more hard engages with a three where you backflip out of the fight than a glass cannon mage build would. And that brings us to builds, which are extremely complicated because she is so extremely flexible with her builds. I know that a lot of people's first thought will be to rush a lot of cooldown reduction. And initially, I tried that as well. However, Baba Yaga's early game isn't that great. She has a bit of ramp up time and late game is definitely where she shines and you want to get there as smooth as possible. And in my opinion, in order to do that, it often feels better to have a little bit more power, therefore better clear and a little bit more of a threat from a single ability rather than just having lower cooldowns on your abilities. If you want to utilize the stacking mechanic while building, is completely up to you. You can use that or you can use not having any item stacks and using the cabin for healing for extreme lane pressure. You can also abuse this by getting more health items and therefore getting more percentage healing or relatively speaking more healing from the same percentage as you have more base health to work with. I'm not going to be able to fit all build options into this video. I think I might have to make a separate video just for her builds. But some things that I wanted to give you as food for thought at least. When it comes to item stars, there are multiple viable options. You can for example start with Mage's Blessing in a tier 1 item and you'll stack Mage's Blessing extremely quickly as the passive can also stack Blessings. You can also start with tier 2 Warlock Staff, Sorcerer Staff, if you want to rush a very early Warlock Staff because she can stack that so quickly. Or, in my opinion, this might actually be the nicest start, start with a full choose of the magi i talked about how to do that in a recent mage video you can check that out it's actually very easy to do and if you start out that way there are various benefits to that you get high early mobility you get high early clear through the high power which she normally doesn't really have and you get sustain in two ways you get a little bit of lifesteal and you also get the sustain from your cabin because you're not stacking any items. And that can allow her to poke a lot while taking very little damage herself, which can make for a very nice setup into whichever build you want to go afterwards. On the same note, I generally think a little bit of lifesteal on her can go a long way, especially in the ultimate. You have so much AoE damage going around that's going to hit someone somewhere, and that can really help you heal up in the ultimate as well, while you can't do that many other things. Outside of that, every book item is basically good on her. You can stack a Book of Thoth if you want to, and then combine that with a Book of the Be Dead for more survivability, which she desperately needs in some situations. Add a Soul Reaver, because it's generally a good mage item, and you can even use Polonomicon on her, which I think fits pretty well into her combo, where you have all these slows for some basic attacks, and you generally weave basic, uh, basic attacks in a lot with her anyways. Royal of Tehuti is never wrong on her, you can even consider something like Bancroft's Talon for power, and of course you can also go with a more expected path, I would say, and go into Warlock Staff. On a Warlock Staff path, I would highly recommend considering Hide of the Urchin. I think Hide of the Urchin is a fantastic item when fully stacked, the risk is always, can you get it stacked? With Baba Yaga, that's much less of a risk. Therefore, it gives her a massive amount of survivability on an otherwise, well, damage-focused mage, and I think that can make for a very dangerous combination, even though I think she's otherwise not that strong at the moment. Kind of like the Dirty Bubble meta style builds, where you just go into those health-focused items, you add maybe a Gem of Isolation, which synergizes very well with the ultimate anyways, and maybe Ethereal Staff for some steals that way, or maybe a Pythagoras piece. There are many options of getting at least some survivability, and I think those can work very well here together with a heavy health focus and tankiness at the start. Other items to consider, of course, Jaren's Coin, which also stacks. You can also look at more damage focused items like Spear of Desolation, Divine Ruin. Really, there are almost infinite viable possibilities on how to build her, and this should give you a good overview. An item that I wouldn't recommend that much is Spear of the Magus. It just doesn't feel rewarding outside of the ultimate, but that's just on a side note. And I don't think most people would have planned to build that anyways. Also consider more bruiser focused items, especially if you are getting heavily focused. Items like Voidstone still are a great fit on her as well. So these are just two examples of what builds for her could look like. Again, there is a ton of variety if you want to throw in more lifesteal, more CDR or something, just do it. It will probably fit on her because most item combinations work super well. 
And that's it for the basic guide for Baba Yaga. I hope this gave you a good overview and you now have a good idea on how to play the character. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this, feel free to hit the sub button and maybe the bell so you'll be notified of upcoming Smite videos that are released. There will be some more Baba Yaga info discussion stuff as well as is Smite growing and some other content in the upcoming days that I'm working on right now. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.